welcome to my channel. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time is, is Tampopo, and I've got it right here. And I, I really wanted to look more into uh, Uzo Utami's uh, work, and I managed to go through his entire catalog. His filmography was quite interesting. There's a lot of the same kind of characteristics of a, you know, a spunky, usually female protagonist. Itami typically had his wife, Nobuko, uh, play the lead role in most of these films. Ten of the eleven films have her in in a role. You know, she's not the typical kind of lead actress, but she's got her, her own kind of unique characteristics that I find quite enjoyable to watch. My goal with this video is to kind of introduce some of his other work and kind of put a subjective ranking to it. So maybe if you've seen Tampopo, you'll know where else to start with. I do agree that probably most people would rank Tampopo as the highest after having seen all of them. I would still say it's the better of the other films. So without further ado, we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go backwards because I think that most people say, you know, Tampopo, number one spot. So rather than have it obvious, I'm just gonna start off with number one as Tampopo. I won't spend too long talking about this film, as there's many videos out there that have probably done a much better job, and this list is just meant to be subjective and just kind of a in brief introduction to each film and my general thoughts. I love the humor in this film, I love the central theme of food and culturally, personal life and business life and how food can affect you and how it can bring families together, you know, in life and death, how food is a part of that. It is Huzo Itami's flagship film. It's one of those films that apparently is more popular in the West than it was even in Japan. And it, it has a lot of heart and spunk in this. It's a typical kind of underdog story with the apprentice and the, and the, the master going through the tribulations. It's kind of like a rocky Balboa type culinary story without any real opponent or, or villain per se. There's no villain or antagonist. It's more so the self-improvement, getting better at one's craft. Overall, just extremely recommend this film. Check it out. Enough good things can't be said If you like Tampopo, I think you'd probably like Supermarket Woman. It's around a supermarket, a failing supermarket that's losing out to a larger competitor. But this time, uh, Nobuku plays a woman that's actually, she's the master in this one. She's the one driving the sales and the, the management of the store. This one does have more of an antagonist with, with rival store, but it's not overbearing. Uh, there's a few tense scenes, but it's overall pretty lighthearted in nature. It's got a lot of similar humor to Tampopo. And I think most people that like Tampopo would probably like this one, although I do think it runs uh, quite close to Tampopo in so many ways. But still, there's nothing else really like it that I've seen, aside from Tampopo itself. So I don't think it's necessarily Itami trying to inf be influenced by his prior work, but I think it's just how he is. And it's a lovely little film, it has a few moments that make me chuckle or laugh. It's got some wonderful cinematography. You're spending most of the time in the grocery store rather than any outside environments. But they're, the way the environments are framed is very well done. It's got a lot of humor, very lighthearted. I definitely recommend it if you like, if you like Tampopo. <laughs> A Quiet Life is one of those films that surprisingly doesn't star Nobuku. It probably has my favorite cinematography of all of his films. It's got this very pastel-like color, uh, or pastel-like colors throughout the film, and it's just framed so lovely. I, I love their outfits. And the, anyway, the story is that family, slice of life kind of story, but does have some differences in terms of tone, which I'll, I'll briefly get into, but for the most part it's lighthearted between this sister and her older brother, and her older brother is mentally challenged, and she's often seen as the, the older sister, even though she's technically younger, because she looks out for him, cares for him, and he does look out for her in his own way as well. But it's a lovely tale between the two siblings and the rest of the family. But there is one criticism I do have, is that I do think that there's a tonal shift with this scene that's kind of outside of the movie in a way, but relevant 
relevant to the movie. And this tonal shift I do find very difficult, or I do find it a bit out of place with the rest of the film tonally and I did not really appreciate it as much. But overall, this film is lovely, and I do think it's it's my favorite film of his from a video cinematography standpoint. So yeah, this one will probably be most controversial on the list. I think a lot of people would place this one quite a bit lower, and that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have quite the etamiisms that his other films might have, but it's still absolutely beautiful film and a wonderful story for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> the Last Dance is an interesting film. I, I, I really like this one. I wasn't a big fan of the, the protagonists. Um, a lot of the male protagonists seem to have womanizing qualities in Itami's work, and I'm generally not a big fan of them, but, but this fellow, I, I kind of took to him after a bit. It seems like it's quite a cultural movie too, how in, apparently uh, in, in Japan they don't really disclose uh, medical diagnosis as much. You know, they might try to withhold things from the person. So there's a bit of a cultural aspect to this too, of like, do you want someone to lift out the last days knowing that they're the last days, or not knowing? So there's a bit of that uh, with it as well. Most of the scenes do take place in the hospital. There's some crazy wild moments in this film, especially toward the end of the film, which uh, are very interesting visually and just from an artistic standpoint, very creative. Just a wild ride to watch. There's a few funny moments as well. And overall, it's, it's a, it's a well-recommended film. And I do think that the last sequence is one of the greatest sequences I've seen and worth the price of a mission for this film. This one from 1984 it actually came out before Tampopo, and it's it's uh, it was his first hit, I, I guess you'd say. It's a very simple film, just about family, friends coming together and having a funeral, basically. Of course, uh, I found a lot of it interesting because uh, I was not familiar with the, the Japanese way of having having a funeral, so it was very uh, culturally interesting to see, and I, 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 it does have a few funny moments in it. You know, the, the, it has some funny moments, including like when they're watching a video on how to address company at the funeral. That was my probably my, my favorite scene in the film. Some of the characters' actions I find kind of questionable from one particular character, especially how it's never really addressed in the film or comes to a front. But because, you know, if it was a Western film, I guess I would have expected that this would be addressed or a source of conflict later on, but here it's just kind of hidden from view and never comes up in conversation or a conflict. This film I would toss up between uh, The Last Dance and this one. I think overall I might actually prefer this film over the over my number four pick, but my the number four pick, The Last Dance, has that sequence at the end that just elevates it for me. If you like uh, Ozu films, this is the one I would I would check out. It's the least Atami type film out of out of the bunch. This film has all the mainstay Tommy regulars, and it's, it's really a, a fun movie. It has the same kind of master and apprentice role with Nubuku being the, the master that comes on, so very similar to Supermarket Woman or, or Tampopo, but this one does have the Yakuza. It has a lot of funny moments involving them as well, even though they are intimidating, they do come off as bumbling idiots at, at points in time. I, re I really do, did enjoy this film. I, I wasn't a big fan of the cinematography in this. I get, the hotel that they were at, I just didn't find that interesting. Some of Tommy's works also have kind of 
of annoying music, in my opinion. Music that sounds very dated or generic or they just overuse it a lot. This one didn't have as much as, say, The Taxing Woman. But uh, overall, I think this is this was one some people might rank higher on the basis that it's kind of closer to humor to, say, Supermarket Woman or Tampopo. But I don't think it had the heart of some of the ones that are that are higher up, including those ones. So it's a bit lower for me, but I do think it's uh, it's a great film. ね。これが有名な唐辞仕事よ。見せてまいりなさいよ。いや、こっち。大丈夫よ。これがお前の墓だ。館長様のは？これか。俺はな、あっちへ入る。Taxing Woman's Return. I actually actually enjoyed this one more than the first Taxing Woman. I guess I didn't find the, the music as irritating, hearing it over and over and over again. And I found this one a lot more a lot more fun. It was a lot more wild and crazy. Um, I fought uh, Nobuku as the expert on taxing law and procedures was was a lot more uh, was a lot more dy dynamic. I thought the cinematography was a bit better, the plot was a bit better, the antagonist was a bit better. I just enjoyed it overall more than the first film, which isn't to say that the first film's a, a bad film. It, and it uh, it's also has an interesting end compared to the other films. You know, it's kind of ends on a pessimistic note, um, which is not typical of uh, Atami's work. So this one has a bit of a bite to it too. And I actually liked the kind of pessimistic approach. Um, it's got all the typical Atami flair to it. Overall, I, I, I do recommend this one. <笑>金は買おうけまで持っていけないよ。何がおかしい。いや、あんたたちには金のことは何も分かっちゃいねえんだ。金は生き物だ。金は時間と共に育つんだ。金は私の子供だ。金は未来。金は未来の命だ。金
わかりますねドカンブワーンってドカンラブバンピストル There's not a whole lot to say about it. It's just a very fun film、uh, involving a, a rubber band pistol and, and this group of friends. It's framed very well, it's in black and white, and it's、uh, quite different than his other work. It's the only one of these in this entire list that doesn't have、uh, his, his wife, Nobuku. And it's a very interesting film. It feels more art house. It's more of an art house film than his other films. Not that that's a bad thing. And it's also interesting from the time period that it took place, since you know, it's 1962. So his next film, which was a feature film, was 1984, which was The Funeral. So, you know, that's 22 years apart, which is quite substantial. Anyway, it's a, gr- it's a great little short film. <laughs> これが私の心よ石ころの心もう決して傷つかないの This film is, it is my least favorite Tammy film and that mostly has to do with just the, the story and the characters You know, the film stars a g i s h a that、uh, brings luck I just did not get on with the characters here It does have the typical kind of womanizing men as well in this film of course You know, they're, they're a mainstay of some of the other films as well, but over here I just found, oh, it just, I just could not like most of these characters. I do like,、uh, you know, Nobuku as the, the geisha. She doesn't do really any, anything wrong, per se, but the, the men that are in this film just irked me the wrong way. It's just like, I think you're supposed to kind of not take to a lot of these、uh, unfaithful characters and such. But yeah, the, the whole story and the premise, too, of a geisha that brings luck to the men that she sleeps with just didn't really. Resonate with me. You know, it is the film is about corruption and influence of money in Japanese politics, too, and a lot of、uh, crooks and underhanded people in here as well. I, I just could not get behind get behind the plot in general or most of the characters. It's not as good, good as the other films on this list.、Uh, I don't think it was as beautifully framed as some of the other ones, but there's some really nice scenes here that at first made it hard to tell the time period of the film because at first I thought it was much earlier, but then, you know, when Get out of certain environments, you realize, oh, this is more closer to what was modern day than, than I had thought. So it's got that kind of interesting. It's a nice little time capsule to see Japan at that time as well. This is my least favorite of his films, but it's not a, it's not a bad one. It's just not my favorite one. <laughs> So, yeah, there you have it. There's my list of all 11 of Itami's films in my preferred order. Because we all have our own personal experiences and bring our own、uh, biases and、uh, life views when viewing these films through different lens. And I might be able to、uh, maybe appreciate one more than, than you might have. Or you might be able to appreciate one more than I might have because of your different viewpoints on things. I'm very glad that you took the time to watch this. I'm very appreciative. Feel free to subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye.